Um, I'd like everyone to please stand up as we welcome Apostle to share the word for us. Please stand up, give a loud shout as we welcome Apostle on the stage. Um, as we just usher him onto the stage. Thank you so much everyone for engaging with us. Hallelujah. Please do take your seats. Greetings in the name of Jesus. Uh, I was just thinking about this that uh, we have missed a lot of things. Um, this is very nice. Can you ask your neighbor, was this not lovely? Was this not very nice? Yeah. Can we bow our heads as we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we give you praise. Even tonight or this, uh, this evening, we give ourselves to you. We pray that may you open the eyes of understanding that we have complicated simple things and we have taken simple things and make them complicated. Father, help us to unravel our own lives, to live a life simple, full of joy, a life in pursuit of you. We thank you, Father, for this grace. In Jesus' name, amen. They did not give me time uh, as to how long I'm going to, uh, to minister. It's our church. Yeah, you should hear the couples to say, it's our church. Amen. Uh, falling in love. There's a song we used to sing, falling in love with Jesus. Can we sing it? Can somebody lead us? Falling in love. Yes, LP. Falling in love with Jesus. Oh. The best, best thing, thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. you cannot build without systems and unfortunately for many of us everything that we have is not our own 
And unfortunately, we don't have longevity or the strength to stick on long enough to make it work. Uh, in love, people are quick to quit. In life, people are quick to abandon. But I want to say to you that uh, I many times think about it. There was an interview done with my uncle. He's a member here in, in, in the church. My grandmother passed away. And they decided they'll take the cameras and go interview my family about my life. And there's one word he said. And this he said. Not because I listened to the interview. The whole family, usually when they are funerals, we gather. So we have a, a very big tribe. So we gathered and we were talking. And he felt to reveal what he said on video. And he says, one thing I know is that he will stick on to it. If he's committed, he'll commit to it. He will not abandon. And this is the challenge I want to bring to you. That if really our love is going to last is that what will make you quit? Many people don't have the strength to stick on. Uh, there's a story my wife always tells, and I think we've heard it more than once in the church, that an elderly man was going to hospital daily. His wife was, she was in a coma. And this old man came, I mean, consistently without fail. He'll come in the morning and leave late at night. And they said to, to him, listen, your wife doesn't see you. She will not even know. And all of that. I might not narrate the story correctly, but the words resonate with what I'm going to say. That he says, it's not about her seeing me. It's the commitment that I've made. And the challenge I have to you, even loving God, loving Jesus, I'm forever grateful. You'll never know as a church. I'm forever grateful as a person that I love Jesus at the, at the specific time of my youthfulness. Is it easy? I was looking at the children dancing here in front of us. And I said, this kind of opportunity was never presented to me. This is a part of the gospel I never knew that it's possible to come to church to have a, almost a musical. There is a level of joy for us to celebrate ourselves, to gather uh, there are people who will not come. There are people who will complain. There are people who will be treacherous. There are people who will see wrong in the good that has been done. But I want to challenge you that if your life is going to last, learn to be tolerant. Learn to be more understanding. Learn to learn that you are more privileged than many. Unfortunately, the people who are privileged, those who are married, they are complaining about their spouse. They are thinking maybe somebody else will be better. Just stick a little bit with the person that are divorced. I have the privilege as a pastor to counsel, to see some of my members are divorced, of course. And one member told me many years ago, he says, I wish, I wish I met you before. I will, I will possibly be still married. Now, much of it is not, it's not difficult. The complexity of life is our selfishness. The things that you want but that might have nothing to do with your your beloved brother or sister just being yourself being unsatisfied about life itself your achievement in life I was talking to our pastors they are young and I said life is uncertain and get used to the fact nothing is permanent nothing is really real even when people are thinking things are working some, something suddenly can come we listen to a number of songs. I think the theme, we are talking with Pastor K. I make a commitment. Next year, we'll do a full production. I think the carols, the carols, and uh, the carols, I think this year we should do a full production. And I said we should have two, three community television stations. A resident, we should start on it. My issue is, we don't celebrate ourselves. Yeah, we don't. I can tell you my stories. I've been a pastor for a number of years. The generation of people I have, the young pastors I have is generation five. I keep record. It's generation five. They are much easier to work with. They are not always nosy. 
they are not using their position, their education. Maybe they don't have much to fight for. But I want to say to you that with the attitude, I will call it new age attitudes, that always makes you to be the first one to enjoy. I was saying to somebody, if you knew the sacrifices that has to be made to have a church, you will appreciate your pastor in the village who took it upon himself to pastor you when all others didn't see the necessity to do it. But I think the critical part for me is the, the effort that the church makes. And I think it's not only Emmanuel Christian Church, but the efforts that the church makes. I was listening to somebody telling me about their church. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's part of the things that are difficult. How he responds to his calling and to the calling of the senior pastor. How life becomes complex. That in his service it becomes difficult. So my, my challenge to you is that be happy. Can you tell me about be happy? Yeah, many people are unhappy. We have a lot of couples here. I've been seeing them eating watermelon. And I said, how nice can life be to be in church and eat watermelon? You get it? But, but somebody, somebody will complain about it. Somebody said, the church is too busy. Then I said, you have never lived. The people who are not in church, their life is more complex than you can imagine. Yeah. Their life is more complex. So, I want you to be happy in your own skin to celebrate the sacrifices that have been made. We are among the few churches that are doing our best to keep Matthew 28 to stick there, to stay there and part of it is loving one another uh, part of it is ministry one to another maybe let me talk to the young men and the young women life is not as complex as you think I received Jesus when I was 16 has it been easy? no uh, was there temptation? yes did I have the opportunity to fall away? I think I've fallen away many times in my heart and in my actions. Have I been treacherous? I think more than once. But I want to tell you something. That having been a Christian for a number of years, the thing that has anchored me, I had a, a friend. I will call him a friend, but he was more like senior to me. He was the same age as my, my brother. He came to school late, so we were at, at school at the same time. He, he took care of me at school. I used to want to dodge, dodge going to SEM. And many times I think about it and say, did I ever thought life can be this nice? Not that there are no challenges. And that's the challenge I want to say to the young person. That take it upon yourself to stay on. To do what? Yeah. Take it upon yourself to stay on. Because if you don't take it upon yourself to stay on, your life will become wild. Many adults are struggling to live a genuine, true life. Uh, people are struggling to enjoy their gains. Partly because they've made bad choices and bad decisions. The theme for, for tonight is... My beloved is mine. Now, when I heard the theme, when I was a child or growing up as a young believer, we used to read the songs of Solomon, but not the way you are reading it. Um, it was about Jesus. There is a, there is a one, the, 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 the Sharon, the, 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 the song that speaks about the lily of the valley. Do you know some? Come again? Yes, yes. Can we sing it again? We were not taught love the way we, the way we know it. Like, oh, I'll be in love with a girl. No, no, no. The beloved was Christ. The bride was the church. That consistent, it was like a, a fight, wanting to be in the presence of each other. But always there are things in between. Let's sing the song together and I believe God will bless us.
sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are. You are brighter than the morning star. You are fair, much fairer than the lily that grows by the wayside. You are precious, most precious than gold. Oh, sweet Jesus. about it as the children were singing I said we have complicated life that we do everything else except the one thing for me the, the, the activity was formation devotion you know the first song they sang or maybe it might be the second uh, maybe the third I don't know you don't, you don't call me anymore. You don't text me anymore. You see, you, you have become somebody's, the career has become the critical part. Yes, the children are no longer important. The husband or the wife is no longer important. I'm laboring and working for you. But the truth about it is about our egos. So I want to challenge you that it is always a good thing to be aware that when all dust settles, it will be you. I met a couple, I've been their, their shepherd for a number of years. Uh, and then this, this man, I, I used to think he's senior to me, but I didn't know. He, he, he's 65. You know, I met him today. And I said, oh, you're 65. I said, I'm pensioning this year. I said, wow. Really? You see, when, when you look at the age, he said, he said something. He says, all our children have left the house. It's me and my wife. 
And he says, I'm learning to love again. Do you understand? I'm, levi- I'm learning to live with my wife again. He made a statement. He says, we never paid attention except for the children. Now, when, when you are not married, you will not understand the statement. In other words, over the years, they've been growing apart without them noticing. They used to be in the same house, sleep the same bed. Now, let's come back to Jesus. You can still be in church and be very, very busy, but have no fellowship with him. And how sad it will be when you arrive there and you realize it is not like that. This is not in the many things we have. Unfortunately for many of our young girls and boys, marriage is about a career. When we're growing, we're going to sing the song again, by the way. We don't text anymore. I want to challenge you and say, what matters? The, the many of us will look at the house, the car, the lifestyle. I was saying to somebody, with the knowledge I have now, listen, I can live anywhere and I'll be happy. But you see, there are people around you who will never be happy. And because of their unhappiness, they take away your happiness, your joy for the things. But the issue is, if you don't have a fellowship with Jesus, I mean, the little excitement that is here, I was just thinking about heaven, how heaven will be like. It will be overwhelming. It's eternity. Do you know eternity? You'll be there, it will be like, I've been here before. So we're going to sing, I'll say this in the song, you don't text me, you don't talk to me anymore. But I want you to think about it. When last did you do your devotion? When last did you take time to Jesus and say, Lord, I'm, I'm excluding my wife. Today, you tell wifey and say, hey, you tell your brother as a young, young person, today I'm not going to read. I'm going to take my time to be in the presence of the Lord. This is what I believe I'm a pastor for. I'm not a pastor because I went to Bible school. Yes, I did for my sake. But I'm a pastor because I have had a personal encounter more than once with Jesus. I was, when we were sitting like this, something, I don't know why they paid me and my children. I've been going to Bogota possibly for 10 years or so. Some things are funny. It's just Pastor Mesh is not here. I haven't seen him. Maybe he's here, I don't know. Uh, I was saying to my wife, this reminds me of Bogota. Yeah, because they have a, they have a portion, in every conference they do, they have a portion a night of love or something. They, they will do something to make us to envy the life. That's my interpretation. Not that that's what they intend. But I look at Pastor Caesar and I say, when I grow up, I want to be like him. I want my life to be happy like a young girl. Okay, maybe like, while we are talking about the young girl. Did you see the girls who were singing here? Did you see how innocent they are? I wish they could keep their innocence. Most women, when they grow up, they lose their girlishness. They become too serious, too competitive, too demanding. So for me, when I look at Pastor Caesar, I said, Lord, if I could just be as happy as this man with my wife. Now she works with her children. They work together. And I said, Lord, I pray that one day all my children will be there. I'm to somebody. Okay, let them give us the song and then ask yourself, do you still text God anymore? Give us the song, please.
toast anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't chat anymore. Don't text anymore. We don't love anymore. We're not happy anymore. We don't smile anymore. Don't laugh anymore. We don't kiss anymore. We don't touch anymore. We don't hug anymore. Oh God, help me, please. Now we have so many arguments. Two people don't agree. We could have been happy together. We could have been joined each other. But there is no more love. So much mistrust and accusations. Oh God, I need the key to my love. Of humility, oh God, help me, please. I need to be humble and to flow. I don't wanna destroy my relationships. We're not close anymore. We don't talk anymore. We don't chat anymore. Don't text anymore. We don't have anymore. We're not happy anymore. We don't smile anymore, don't laugh anymore, we don't kiss anymore, we don't touch anymore, we don't love anymore, oh God help me. Amen. Praise the Lord. One is to God and the other one for the marriage. I think that was your song. Uh, the longer the longer you stay with Jesus, the more familiar you become with him. It's a, it's a sad part of our journey that the longer people stay, the less involved they are. The less excitement. I was watching uh, Nicholas and his bride and I was saying to Pastor K, yeah, he should love to touch. <laughs> the older couple that you are close to, you might just speak to Dr. Uh, Mrs. Mrs. CBC and, and Dr. CBC and hear if they still touch anymore. Yeah, I wish that light could go and brighten them so that we can see their face. You see, we complicate things because we don't touch anymore. In a sense, uh, I saw a video, maybe I must, I must not say it, but I saw, I had, a, I, had a, I had a couple in the church many years ago, and the woman says, she said to me, when I get angry with this man of mine, this is when I go to bed, the way I dress, I clearly state to him, don't touch me. I wish I, I've taken that video, a young, a young woman dressing up, and at the end, I think 10 pence or whatever. Then he put a pet log. And he bumped on the bed and pulled the blanket. Mercy. Hallelujah. Let me read the scripture that the children read. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. My, my prayer will be one that may God attend to the voice of our prayer. It is the desire that every young girl should find a husband. It is the desire that every woman or every, every man will find an adoring wife. Yes, I get fascinated. Maybe I should speak a bit about my wife. The pictures I have, many pictures, and, and people have shown me uh, how my wife looks at me. Somebody was saying, she doesn't seem like she's getting tired of it. You know, and I said, uh, I'm grateful that my wife is fully devoted to me. And I want to challenge every person here who desires to marry. If, if you are not going to be a loving husband and a devoted wife to your husband, forget it. Uh, it's going to be mechanical. I remember I said to Nicholas' wife, and I think I said to Bongi's wife, before they got married, of course, Bungi's wife, I remember what I said. She might not remember. Um, it was the wedding of 
uh, Osesta. And I said, did Bongi tell you he's going to be a pastor? Where's the missus? Do you remember missus? I said, you know, this guy is going to be a pastor. Be happy. Uh, Nicholas' wife, I don't know if she will remember. But it's not long ago, so she must remember. And I said, be happy. Be happy. We don't have much, but by the grace of God, we'll have more. But many of us are unhappy with the state we are in. Yeah, we are very unhappy. And the more you have, the more complex the relationships become. Okay, let me cut my losses and uh, maybe come down because uh, we've been eating watermelons. Maybe there's something more. I should, I should be expected <laughs> that apart from watermelon, there's something more. Hallelujah. Be happy to be, ha- to be busy. People don't like church. to be busy. Now, you need to talk to the married couples that don't go to church. I do counseling. I used to do counseling before. I used to charge for counseling for all people who are not members of our church. All, 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 all people who are not members of our church. There are a lot of executive, executives, people who are working in powerful positions who are very dissatisfied with life. They've, they've involved themselves in many things and they've not found happiness. And part of it is because they fail to recognize the sacrifice that is demanded to be happy. To run, to, to come into church, to participate in the church is a sacrifice. Even in the world, it's still a sacrifice. People will sacrifice their, their husbands, their wives, and their children. And at the end of their life, I remember a story, which is a true story, by the way, that the father, when he came back, the children said to him, you have enjoyed your life, leave us out of, out of our life. We don't want to be part of your life as you didn't want to be part of our life. Now, by that time, he's rich, but his health is failing. He's hoping to reconcile with his children so I can enjoy. I was sitting here and playing with Hadassah, or Hadassah decided to play with me for one reason or the other. But I was just thinking about it. I said, I'm the most nicest person in the house than all of them. You get it? So, all of them are unfriendly. The mother is pushing her away. The father says, go away. And the grandmother says, "Uh, go to your grandfather. But think about it. At the end of, of it all, is it worth it? Is your life worth it? Is your life worth it? Okay. Mercy. Let's go to verse 8. Chapter 8, sorry. Chapter 8, verse 6 and 7. Songs of Solomon, please. Not Psalms. Can we read it together? Want to go. Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, jealousy as strong as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire, a vehement flame. Next verse. Many waters cannot quench love, nor can floods drown it. If a man will give for love all the wealth of his house, it could be utterly mercy. Now, I want you to have the understanding to make that decision. It says here, set me as a seal upon your heart. My prayer tonight is that, may we said, I was saying, part of my cry is that's the attitude that we carry. That we will not I mean, we had so many things today. I think in Midrand, they are having orientation day. I saw the worker here. I think they had orations, or, oration, orientation day. We have outreach for Mount Horeb. At the same time, we have 
the, my beloved is mine. What do you think? What do you think? Set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death. I don't know what is it that you love. But for me, I think they ask uh, Tuto his first love. Maybe you should ask your neighbor, what, what is your first love? I know, first love, people are thinking about their, their, their girlfriend. But the thing that really moved your heart, the thing that really makes, made you to change, why people change careers, is when they find their first love. Why people pursue things is when they make the decision. I remember many years ago, I had a friend. I was, I was in training and development as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a senior manager and doing very well, happy as a person. And I told the person, I'm coming to church. I'm going to be a full-time pastor. I'm going to love Jesus. The person was a very good person, very accomplished. And he told me, I want to do what you're doing. I'm going to resign. I mean, it was fascinating. I said, man, are you serious? He says, yes. I remember one day he packed his car right in front of the door here with books that he has written. He says, I've even written books. And I asked the question, what do you have to write to the world? What is it that you are going to give? Because you are just in the, in the elementary. You see, but I mean, he's an academic person, a very good researcher, but he has not lived the life. Is writing about things that he thinks he's passionate about, but he has not given his life to his own teachings. And so I said, the material you are writing is empty because you still have to prove it yourself. A very good friend. He was, he was a, a powerful person. May so rest in peace. And I said, I said to myself, I thought about it. I said, hmm. Maybe I should do like him. I should write. But I said, what will I be writing? And I remember one time Bishop Doug said, when he read that there are pastors who have written books too quickly. And when, he was, when the, this pastor was in heaven, he says, I wish all my books could be taken and be crushed into a dust and be thrown away. Because it's what drives us that makes us, this is why I say, put me as a seal upon your heart, a seal upon your arm. May my love for you not be a love that is conditional, that is made out of the things I have, or what the promise that you have. So I want you to have that understanding that in love, I will want all of us to marry those who are not married. Marriage can be nice, but at the same time, marriage can be treacherous. I've seen people's lives destroyed, people bitter, angry. I think they say in the sun there that there's a, there's a bitterness that can come. And part of the bitterness is the disappointment that all of us have as we grow. So as we come to Christ, I want you to have this uh, John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, than one laid down his life. For a friend you cannot succeed in the kingdom unless you are the sacrifice there's no amen i say you cannot succeed in the church and in life unless you are the sacrifice this is not 50 50 it's not like oh the guy is nice to me so i'll be nice to him the seeds you are the one who sows them you sow the seeds you wait for the harvest. And the harvest will come in time. The new little words, Brother Nicholas, uh, Pastor Sia, Pastor Bongs, the young couples. It's time. It takes what? Time for love to grow. And love is not really love until it's selfless. 
until you move out of feelings and emotions and you give yourself fully to it. And for the young ones who really are looking up to us with the hope that, oh, I'll get a red rose. We were laughing with Pastor K when Tato was talking about the small cup with love and some small teddy bears. I said, oh, I wish life, life was that easy. You know, just get a teddy bear and be in love. You see, but it's more complex than the teddy bear and a, a coffee mug. But we need the coffee mug, Pastor Sia, and we need the teddy bear because it's an expression of our love to each other. Did you, did you know that giving money is one of the most wonderful things? But most of the time, it's the tokens that we give that makes us to remember. Because money makes us to forget. There's not enough money that you can give to any person and they'll be happy. And I want to challenge all of us that as she spoke about the cup and all of that, that we need to give each other tokens. I was talking to the DCBC. Their branch invited me. And uh, we were with, uh, um, what is his name? CBC helped me. We're talking, and I said, what, what, have you, you, what gift have you given to your wife? Yes, KB. I was talking to KB. He was lifting up his baby. And I said, what gift? It's tokens that makes life more memorable when everything else fails. So even with us, what is it that we give to the Lord that will make us to stay? If we give our life, we'll get life from him. But if we give him service, chances are that our humanity will fail. Because in service, there is dissatisfaction. But if we give him our life, the Lord will give us his life. Can we read the book of John chapter 3 verse 16 and verse 17 and I close. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have an everlasting life. Verse 17. I like verse 17 personally. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn. And maybe let me stop there and say you cannot, in the church, you cannot do much with condemnation. One of the most dangerous things I found in the church is a word called self-righteous. Can you say self-righteous? After people are forgiven, after their sins are forgiven, after they come before the Lord and their things are working, they don't give other, other people the grace to grow. Their level of judgment, their harshness. In our constitution as a church, part of discipline, we wrote there, Discipline is not meant to amputate. You know what is to amputate? Yes, it's to cut people's heads, to take people's eyes, and to think you are equalizing. I said, any person who might go wrong needs to be restored back into a place of function again. Now, the Bible says God did not send his son into the world to condemn. And if we can help ourselves not to be too critical. Today, tonight was great. I've enjoyed myself and uh, Pastor Sia we're, we're thinking about it with Pastor K and said the young pastors have changed our church our church is better our church is beautiful and we are growing to become something that we never thought is possible as I sit and enjoy and I think I'm not the only one who enjoyed it uh, I think many of you as you are sitting down you are asking yourself I've missed a lot in church. You see, we should have, we should have at least one of these every, every Sunday until end of February. Okay, let me help you with condemnation. There are going to be people who are going to take hard on Valentine's. There are Christians who talk about anything wrong. They'll talk about Christmas and then tell you about anything wrong about Christmas. That is a pagan celebration. It's all of this, it's all of that. And I say, granted, but we have decided to dedicate it to the Lord. Somebody is going to try and criticize you for your excitement and try to pour in your heart corruption. 
So that the little things that makes a person happy, you will be unhappy. There is a story that is given. Maybe this is our story. We went to doctor's wedding. Myself, I think the whole, the greater part of the church. We went to Lesotho. Me and my family, we booked into a hotel. Only to discover there are two hotels with the same name. So we, 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 we got into our hotel. We were very happy. It was very nice. I mean, we were very excited. Then we decided, let's travel. Let's drive around Maseru so that we can see that, uh, you know, we, we have not been to Maseru for a long time. So let's go and, and drive around and see. So as we drove, we finished and we decided, let's put our hotel back on the, on the navigator so that we can go back. So it gave us... The same hotel is the same group, but a different one. I'm telling you, you wouldn't believe. When we entered the other hotel, the grand, like Science City, the grand entrance, we said, oh, did we use the back door? <laughs> this hotel has two entries, so we entered through the, the back door of the you know, like the service entry, entry, entry gate, and they allowed us. So, no problem. So we drive in, we come closer, and we start to realize that this hotel and our hotel, they have the same name. And this hotel is full already, so we had, they booked us into the other hotel. Our dissatisfaction. We were happy in the first place. Can you tell him, can you be happy, please? <laughs> yeah. Many of us are dissatisfied. Because now, we know that the neighbors are eating roast chicken. Amen. It says, it says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. It is my prayer that as we celebrate this, we may be saved. This might not draw you away to go and look for a boyfriend. No. But to get deeper into God. To know Him. To fellowship with Him. Imagine somebody. Uh, in Tadir Lindo, you are the only couple that is old here. I don't know. Maybe I didn't look well. But I think this is the time as you grow your children to enjoy the moments. This, this, this former disciple of mine says, all my children are gone. It's me and my wife and we are learning each other again. I felt this pain. I knew what he's saying. That is, it might not be as easy as it was in the beginning. The dust has settled. You are no longer working. You have to stay home. Was it here when I said, go and look at your grandmother? Your grand yes, it was yesterday. Your grandmother will be, your grandfather will be under the tree. Your grandmother will be in the house. The two of them are not doing anything. But they can't be together under the same shade. Is it not sad? Yeah, the rest of their life, they worked. And the same is true. You can be in church and not love Jesus. Yes, be busy with the ministry. I told you, I have a friend who was talking about one, the man is late now, one man who achieved so much. If I tell you the name, you'll know. He says, this man is making great exploits for a God he doesn't know. It will be said, the day you die, and you discover that you never knew God. Every eye closed, Every head, but I can't even see you. I don't know why I say every eye closed, but I'm used to it. I want to pray together with you. If you are here tonight, this concert has become a revival in your heart. I don't want to take that all of us have come to know Jesus, but I want to pray together with you. If you are here, you say, Mfunde, I want to receive Jesus. I want to recommit. Maybe you are born again, but your life was not really committed to God. But he said, I want to recommit my life to Jesus. Well, it's the first time you are coming. Said, I've enjoyed everything. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to pray together with you. Is there anyone here this evening 
and say, Pastor, pray with me. I want to receive Jesus. I want to be born again. For God did not send his son to condemn, but that through him we might be saved. If you are that person, just lift up your hand high and we'll pray together. I want to receive Jesus. I want to be born again. I want to be a child of God. Is there somebody? Mercy. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. What a privilege, what a joy to be in your presence, to experience your goodness. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I don't know the Mr. and Miss, Miss MC. Can we give a powerful clap offering? I think it will be really disingenuous just to give my gratitude to what the worship team has done. I think they really did a good job. They did a really wonderful job. Uh, I think it's time Let me also extend my gratitude to the ones who were behind the scenes. They were doing, oh, I'm, I think I'm getting a, sorry. Oh, uh, there was one thing that's supposed to be, that was supposed to be covered, which is offering. So uh, let me call again the patriarch, the pioneer, that they were going to talk to Apostle Vincent for the oh, 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 on, on second note, Pastor Moses. Better clap offering, amen. Oh, let's give it up for Jesus, hallelujah. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're going to come before the Lord and bless the Lord with our offerings. Hallelujah. If I were you, I would believe God for a husband and a wife. If you believe it, shout amen. Shout your loudest amen. amen. Oh, yes. Sow a seed and it will come back to you. Hallelujah. Genesis 8.22, the Bible says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest hallelujah seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease amen this is a season to sow into love hallelujah particularly today hallelujah because it's an event of a type amen so i want you to come before the lord and believe god for fresh love Believe God for a wonderful partner who will love you in life. Hallelujah. But most of all, as you sow a seed, I want you to believe God for a better relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. That, Lord, my relationship has, has been tainted. I've fallen in love with other things. But as I give into your house, oh, Lord, I believe that my, life, my love for you will be revived. Amen. So let us come before the Lord and bless the Lord with our friends as the worship team gives us a powerful song. my 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we give thanks for this beautiful evening. We thank you, Father, for the presence of the Lord that is in this place. We thank you for the wisdom of God from our Father that you have given him to teach us, to show us the light in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for reviving our love for you and reminding us that, Lord, you are our first love. We pray that, Lord, as we have given into your house, we pray that, Lord, our love for you will be revived. We pray that these seeds will grow, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And our love for you will spark like wildfire in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for every single person who has given their tithes as well. The Bible says here on earth, mortal men receive the tithes, O oh Father. But in heaven, you are the one who receives them. We pray as you promised in your word that you bless your people, King of glory, and open the window of heaven and pour out a blessing that they will have no room enough to contain. Lord, in the name of Jesus, may they be called blessed by nations and they may, may they become a delightsome land in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your glory and your grace upon our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody shouts a big, loud amen. amen. As we welcome our Father with a clap offering. Goodbye, world. Amen. Can we, if you can stand, can we be on our feet? I'm going to ask, I want to pray for all the children that are here. Not, not when you say children, not babies, but all the unmarried. Can you come here in front? Let's pray for you. You know, there are things that are a privilege. They happen at a specific time. There's a time we prayed in the church. 
for marriages. And I think that year we had 20, uh, 19 marriages in one year. Hey. 19 marriages in one year. Hallelujah. I had a brother making an application. Say, I like sister so and so. <laughs> I said, I don't propose for you, brother. <laughs> I'll pray for you, but I don't propose for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. May you be proposed in Jesus' name. Amen. By a godly man. Amen. And uh, there are some of us who don't need any relationship for now. Amen. Yes, until we finish our our high school, our university. I'm going to ask those who have the grace who are married, can we stretch our hands uh, to ask them that God, you know, I was thinking about it, I said, yeah, this is seriously evoke. Amen. I married very young, so I'm, I'm a firm believer that you are better to fall in love at the young age uh, before your life become messed up with so many other different experiences that you were not supposed to have in the first place. Father, in the name of Jesus, here are your children standing before you. Father, you have blessed us that when we call for the youth, half of the church comes forward. Father, we pray for the grace of love. We pray, Father, for their mind to be strong enough to resist temptation, but Father, to be mature enough to be in love. Father, I commit them into your hands. I pray this day, as we did many years past. Father, we call upon marriages in the name of Jesus. Godly marriages in the name of Jesus. We, we call upon godly men who will love and cherish the relationship they have with a young woman in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for godly young women who will not entrap the brother but Father, who will genuinely allow the love and the relationship to mature in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray even today as we read the songs of Solomon about the bride that is being pursued, the groom that is seeking. Father, we pray that their lonely hearts may find you. That Father, may you be their true first love before they have any heartbreak. Father, we pray that may be their true love, that they will love others with the same sacrificial love. Amen. That they will understand that marriage is for those who sacrifice. Amen. I commit this the children before you. As they lift up their hands, Father, I pray may they be lifted up in this life. Amen. Father, may they be properly married in the name of Jesus. Amen. May they not fall by the wayside in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, may you preserve them in the name of Jesus. May their marriages, Lord, become glorious, an example to many in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for your way says, He who finds a woman has found favor, grace from the Lord. Father, we pray that the young men, Father, may not have a wandering eye, marry a strange woman who will lead her away from the Lord. Father, we pray for the young woman who will not have a lustful eye, a longing eye that will lead her astray because of material things. Father, we pray even today for the joy of the Lord to be the strength of these children. That, Father, they will walk perfectly before you, that you will bless them fully in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May his face shine upon you. Amen. May the Lord give you peace. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So, maybe we should break the record. We should break the record and have, I think, we had, was it 17 or 19 weddings in one year? To a point that you have to manage the announcement so well. That people should know the next wedding that is coming. So that everybody, you know, there were people who were selfish that this one I can't go, but I'll go to that one. 
So may the Lord bless you so much that all of our churches at the same time. You know, there was a time we, we had two weddings at the same time here in Acadia. Yeah. It was difficult. Two weddings, same weekend, and the church is big enough to make two, two families happy that the people were there. May it be our story in 2023. Moving forward. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. May the Lord bless you. Take your seats. Okay, let's pray. Let me pray for the couples. All those who are standing, I take it you are taken. So come forward. Let me pray for you. The couples, the merit. Let my love last. What is, what is that song? Come again. I want my love to last. Hey, what do you think? Yeah, I want my love to last. Hey, there's a lot of things. Uh, see, there's a lot of things. Patience, tolerance, forbearance, fighting bitterness. I was talking to a very senior minister. He says, in one year, he told his wife ten times, I will divorce. It's like every month, I'm divorced. I'm divorced. We are taking mom from this and from this. We have been married for, for many years. May grace locate us. May we find joy to get older together. Hallelujah. May your wife remain a girl. There are certain things that my wife does. I, I sometimes say, I wish many women would be like you. Yeah, Dr. CBC. Still be the girl that the guy likes. In my house, my wife still laughs louder. They will come to the door. Coo, 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 coo. What are you laughing at? We say, it's not about you, it's about us. Leave us alone. I might tell somebody, we are on a queue. We are on a queue either on the plane we're going to board and my, my wife has a, a, a very sharp laughter <laughs> and somebody was saying oh are you husband and wife and you still laugh like this and I said oh there is there isn't much to laugh for it's not about the house it's not about the car it's about us even the children they know we tell them before you wear we wear so we will not fight because of you. Imagine somebody. So we're going to pray for you that God will give you the grace of contentment. Yeah. One of the graces of contentment is saving in the house of God. Oh, we come home. We're telling another couple, say, we come home tired. I'm from a funeral today. I woke up at four, prepared for the morning prayer. When I finished, it was soaking rain today. Immediately we finished, we said, Amen. I was reversing my car. When I was leading, I was already dressed up in my suit and everything. When we said, Amen, I got into the car, drove far. It was soaking rain. The rain never stopped until we, we left, came back to Pretoria. It was raining from, from the time we left to the time we came back. So when we arrived in Pretoria, we realized it was not been raining as much. I went to somebody. So we do many things. And I'm in church. I couldn't go to Kavalasani because when I arrive here, you should have been finished a long time. But guess what? Next week I'll be there. Yeah. There are many things to do. Your joy is a struggle. It's not an easy life. Most people are saying, oh, if I could have a million rand, a million rand will cause you more problems. I went to somebody. Unless you have gained it in time. Lift up your hands. Let's pray for you. <coughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, that is a perfect family. Father, we bring them before you in the name of Jesus. That Lord, in the book of Genesis, chapter 2, Father, there is a beautiful story that a man looked at the woman and said, truly, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. 
I'll take delight in her. I will leave my father and my mother. He had a revelation of things he never had. He spoke about things he never experienced. Father, we pray for the joy of life to come upon these couples. And we pray, we pray for many of ECC who could not come today that the power and the grace of the Holy Spirit may be upon them. We pray for the joy of life that money should never be an issue. That, Father, we should find solace in each other. That if there is any place to be happy, is to be together. Father, I pray, may you revive and restore the excitement of their first meeting. The excitement of courting. That, Father, it may continue in their relationship. That in the struggles of life, as we lack in many things, may we compensate each other by forgiveness by forbearing, by overlooking in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, for finances. Bless your people, Father, with good income. Bless them, Father, with good business ideas. Bless them, Father, with the strength to raise children. We we'll pray for the wombs that none will be barren in the name of Jesus. That even in old age, they will still give birth in the name of Jesus. That they will be fertile and strong in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that may their life be enriched by many great things that will come into their life. Children, money, houses, and opportunity for ministry. To minister to themselves and to many of us. We pray, Father, that where there is discord, where there is pain, where there is disagreement. Father, we pray for the joy and the peace of God. Just a person's understanding to rest and abide even upon their life in Jesus' name. I bless them, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Can I give you a free advice? Most people don't relate. Learn to relate as couples. In church, we are here till late. Last week, for the first time, we had lunch together. What was happening last week? Because I had, I had even three or four pastors coming to my house to eat. Eh? It, it just happened. Eh? Oh, Pastor T. Okay. They say it, it was because of Pastor T. I, my, my marriage was saved by friends. We always cooked, you know, small pots. Sunday, we come to church. We know we'll be in church. Our church, this church, where I come from, we used to be in church till late. So when you go to church, we have cooked already. So when we finished together, because we're all of us together in the church, the nearest house, that's where we went. And we used to put blankets outside under the tree and eat our little foods. And then later, five, six, seven, we go home. So learn to enjoy life. Don't make it a restaurant lifestyle. Small things makes a great difference. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May many children come out of you. May you increase the church by giving birth. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. May the Lord bless you. <laughs> more children. Plenty children. Yes, more. Four, four plus. Four plus. Four, four plus. You must be greater. You must have five. I have four. You must have five. Amen. Thank you so much. Let me hand back.